Hi guys, uh, today I want to talk about the practical exam, uh, some common uh, problems and simple mistakes that a lot of students make with the practical and then hopefully you won't make those mistakes and this will hopefully improve your grade. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to talk about is the table and uh, with the, the first practical, so you, obviously there's, there's two different practicals that you need to do in the exam, but I just want to talk about the table because it's a, a, a source of problems. Uh, so you need six uh, sets of readings in the, the table. With with the experiment, now we have no idea as teachers what experiment you're going to get given. We get given a list of things that are going to be put out on the table, but we don't know what the experiment is. Now, with, with your, the experiment that you have in front of you, when you start the exam, just think what's the range uh, of, of the experiment or the, the measurements that you can take? Uh, because often Cambridge looks at your marks and says, well, they didn't use the full range of the equipment given. So just make sure, just think, well, if you're making a measurement maybe with a meter stick, what, what's the maximum variation that you can have in this experiment? So that's something to think about. A, a simple thing that students often forget, uh, column headings, they, you have to have a physical quantity and a unit. Uh, please be consistent as well. So uh, the values that you record must be to the precision of your instrument. And then if you have to do a calculation with uh, the values that you've recorded, uh, well, the number of significant figures can be the same as or one more than the measured values. Okay. Uh, graphs are a big part of this, uh, uh, this exam. You need to use a sensible scale. So the scale must be chosen so that the plotted points occupy at least half the graph grid in both the x and y directions. Uh, the scale, you've got to label it, guys, with the quantity that's being used, and probably the unit as well. I would do that as well. Uh, and then the scale marking should be no more than three large squares apart. So just make sure you fill it out fully. Uh, all the observations that you plot, oh, sorry, that you've recorded on your table uh, must be plotted. Uh, the diameter of the plotting points must be uh, less than half a small square. So don't do massive blobs on your graph paper, although most of you won't do that. And the uh, the points uh, need to be accurate to be uh, to about half a small square. Now, normally, what happens is the examiner will just probably measure about one or two, and then hopefully you you, you should get it right. Okay, let's just talk about um, uh, the line of best fit. Now, you don't need to force it to go through the origin, so it shouldn't. You don't ha necessarily have to go through zero. Okay, uh, you need a good um, balance of points uh, around your line. So let's have a look like at what it says here. So judge by a balance of all the points uh, on the grid. Uh, but if one of them is an outlier, don't use it. So if there's obviously one point that's really, really far away from where you want to put your line of best fit, you, you, you're lucky because you, Cambridge will allow you to just uh, ignore one point, but you've got to label the fact that you're ignoring it. If you don't, ignore, if you don't label that you've ignored it, then you're going to uh, lose marks. Uh, there must be an even distribution of points either side of the line uh, and along the full length. And then the line must not be kinked. Uh, so please, guys, don't turn up with a 15cm ruler. Turn up with one of those 30cm rulers so you can just get a nice, good, uh, single straight line and use a sharp pencil or, or uh, a pen if you're feeling confident. Uh, the next thing you're asked to do is probably go back a page and then you're going to have to find the gradient. Uh, now make sure your gradient triangle is at least half the length of the drawn line and then you're going to use uh, uh, delta y over delta x to find the gradient. And then you're often asked to find the y-intercept and there's two different methods you can do that. Well, uh, if you're confident your gradient is correct then you can use y equals mx plus c uh, or if, uh, uh, if your line of best fit doesn't go below the origin and then you can just read off from the graph. And I would be safe and I would just read off from the graph rather than put it back into y equals mx plus c because you might have made a mistake with your gradient and then at least you're not going to lose a mark for uh, the y-intercept. Okay, let's just talk about the, the question number two and then there's just a few little problems here as well that often students make. Uh, often you're asked to find like a, a value like a uh, of k. Uh, it would be nice if you guys put the units, okay? Uh, and then uh, there's often a question, is there a relationship uh, between what, whatever you're being asked to investigate? Uh, and students often uh, don't know how to answer this. What you need to work out is uh, the, the uh, percentage difference between the two values of k or whatever it is. 
Uh, and then you can say something, well, th well, let's have a look at what the student said. The relationship is invalid because there's more than 10% difference between the values. So often you need to choose uh, uh, a percentage difference. I think Cambridge likes 5%, but I would go with 10 because you're going to be nervous in the exam. You might make a mistake or... Uh, I think 10%, I've, I've never had a, a problem with 10%, and not often I tell my students to write 10%, so I would recommend that you do it too. And then you're going to say the, the result does not support the relationship because the difference in percentage is greater than 10%. Okay, and then also significant figures. Often there's a question about significant figures. Uh, every calculated value must be given to the same number of significant figures as, or one more than, the least significant figures in the corresponding values measured in the experiment. So if you just remember that line verbatim, then uh, uh, you're on a winner. Okay, I think that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to make a second video now for the very, very last part of uh, the paper two. So uh, have a look out for that. Uh, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye for now.